Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be going over the top weapons to main in 2023. The main criteria I have set up for these weapons is that they are quite versatile, so they are strong at many different activities and not just specialized in one particular one. So here are the top 5 weapons in no particular order, we have 4 focused on PvP and then 1 focused on PvE. First and foremost, we have the Carving Sword. So the Carving Sword is obviously a sword with the E ability that can dash a short distance and pierces everything as well as doing damage that it hits based on the amount of Q stacks that it had. Pierces in Albion, abilities that reduce your enemy's resistances, are extremely valuable both in PvE and PvP situations, so they're almost always good. Combine this with the mobility that the Carving Sword has on its E and you have an overall general super strong weapon. Taking a look at the strengths for the Carving Sword, first and foremost we have that it's very versatile when it comes to PvP. Mainly, no matter what scale or type of PvP you want to do in Albion, Carving Sword will at least be viable if not already the meta. It is quite strong for all forms of solo PvP, but at the same time very good in large groups as well. Along with this, it's not too difficult to spec up because it is very good in group fame farms. Like I mentioned, pierces are extremely valuable for increasing the amount of damage that everybody does, so in a group, an AoE pierce is extremely valuable and the carving provides just that. Because of this, a group fame farming party will basically always want a pierce, and a carving sword is one of the best options. Along with this, the carving sword is quite a simple weapon. Its playstyle is pretty simple. This means it's pretty easy to get effectiveness out of it. You just stack up your Qs to three stacks, run in with your E, use your pierce, and then do the rest of your damage. You really don't need to be particularly good at PvP to get a lot of effectiveness out of the carving sword. That being said, in large group play, it's usually reserved for more experienced players, which I'll get to in a second. Last but not least for the strengths of the Carving Sword, it is currently in the meta, it has been in the meta for quite some time, and it's unlikely to really ever fall too far out of the meta. Just fundamentally, the mechanics of the weapon make it quite strong, and so it's basically always going to be viable, if not right there in the meta. Moving on to the weaknesses of the Carving Sword, first up we have that it's not the best at solo fame farming. So we touched on that it's very good with a group, but as a solo, if you're not really into fame farming with a group, it can be a little bit rough. It's not a bad fame farming weapon for solo, but it's definitely not a good one. It's sort of just average. Another weakness is that while it is a simple weapon, it does have quite a high skill floor in group PvP. Basically, Carving Sword is used to pierce clumps before the rest of the DPS hit it, and so the Carving Sword needs to be really on time and in position to hit the targets first to get the pierce before the rest of the damage hits. Combine that with it being a melee weapon, and you need a relatively experienced player to be able to do that consistently. So while the weapon itself is fairly simple and easy, its role in group PvP is often one of the hardest ones, and so it's often reserved to more experienced players. Last but not least for its weaknesses, the Carving Sword is an artifact weapon made out of soul artifacts, so it can get a little bit expensive at high tiers. It's not too bad compared to some of the Relic and Avalonian ones, but it's definitely significantly more expensive than just a non-artifact weapon, especially at those really high tiers. Looking at an example build for our Carving Sword here, usually you'd want to tailor your build specifically to the activity that you're doing, but this build is sort of a generic one that can work both for solo and for group fame farming and for PvP. So we have the Mistwalker Jacket, Scholar Sandals, Helmet of Valor, and a Martlock Cape. Before we get on to the next weapon, did you know that I give free stuff away constantly, especially whenever a video is released in my Discord? You can find the link in the description. Also, you can find in the description other links to sort of support me and help me make videos like this. Or just subscribe, that helps too. Next on the list we have the one-handed mace. The one-handed mace is a mace with a mobility E that jumps to target location, stunning targets and dealing damage. The one-handed mace is a hybrid damage slash crowd control weapon, allowing you to build into either one or both. Looking at its strengths, first and foremost, the greatest strength of the one-handed mace is its insanely versatile playstyles. The one-handed mace is probably the single most versatile weapon when it comes to playstyle for all weapons in the entire game. You can go with a group and go on as a tank, either as an engaged tank or a disruption tank, as a solo DPS, as a group DPS. Basically, the one-handed mace can fulfill any playstyle besides like healing. Along with this, obviously that means it's very versatile for PvP. For all sizes or forms of PvP, one-handed mace can usually fulfill some role or job. 
That being said, in the meta, there will usually be very specific builds or very specific roles for it to fill. Next on the list of strengths for the one-handed mace, it has a low skill floor but a high skill ceiling. Basically, the one-handed mace is very easy to get effectiveness out of. You just jump in and do your damage or do your CC. But on the other side, it also has iframes on the E. It has different forms of interrupts, many different forms of CCs from silences, interrupts, snares, stuns. It has different buffs and debuffs. So basically, a really skilled player will know what to use when and get some incredible value out of it if you really know what you're doing. So if you're a noob and you're just spamming buttons, you can be pretty effective, but if you're an extremely experienced player, a really good one-handed mace player is terrifying. Last up for the strengths of the one-handed mace is that it is relatively cheap. It's a non-artifact, one-handed weapon, so no matter what, it's always going to be relatively cheap. Moving on to the weaknesses of the one-handed mace, first and foremost, it usually gets shoehorned into specific builds and playstyles. So while it can do everything, usually in the meta it is quite shoehorned into a very specific playstyle or a very specific build. It's really often not the best at everything, only good for one specific thing. Along with this, another weakness is that it's really not that great at fame farming unless you want to run as a tank with a group. It's not that great at running a DPS build in a group fame farm, and for solo fame farming it's not that great, although it's also not that bad. Similar to the carving sword, it's sort of in the middle. It's alright, but not great. Looking at an example build for the one-handed mace, it's going to be extremely content dependent and extremely playstyle dependent, so you really need to tailor your build to what you want to fulfill with it. So for this video, I'm just going to give you an example starter beginner one-handed mace tank build. We're going to run the shield, guardian armor, hunter shoes, and knight helmet. Next up we have the blood letter. The blood letter is a dagger that has the E ability that is a dash which does bonus damage to anything under 40% HP, basically executing most things. Looking at the strengths of the Blood Letter, first and foremost, it is extremely versatile when it comes to PvP. The Execute mechanic in Albion is extremely rare and extremely strong. So for any scale of PvP, solo up to ZBZ, an Execute is basically always desirable. As a result, Blood Letter as the best Execute weapon out there has been used for all scales of PvP basically since its inception. Along with this, if we look specifically at Blood Letter as a solo PvP weapon, it is extremely versatile when it comes to build and playstyles. You can run Brawly with a Mercenary Jacket, you can run a super ratty build where you just try to steal kills with mobility and stealth, or you can run like a one-shot cheese build. There's tons of different options for doing it, so if you want a generically good solo weapon, Blood Letter will also fulfill that niche. Along with these strengths comes in the fact that the Blood Letter has the best mobility in the game. There are about three weapons that can say they're the best mobility in the game, and Blood Letter is one of those weapons. It is extremely high mobility. So if you also want to use it as a gathering weapon, or just a generic escape weapon, or even a chasing weapon, it's going to be good for all that sort of stuff. Last but not least for strengths of the Blood Letter is that it is very easy. The Blood Letter is a super simple weapon. All you have to do is run around looking for people at under 40% HP or getting them to under 40% and press E on them and they'll probably die. It's super simple, super easy, anyone can be effective with it. Moving on to the weaknesses of the Blood Letter, it really only has one big weakness that I can think of and that it's pretty bad at fame farming or specking it up. In a group fame farm, it's really not very desirable of a weapon to run, and as a solo fame farm, it's not that great. It's probably the worst of our weapons on the list so far. There are some weapons that are worse than it, but it's pretty bad. Taking a look at an example build for Blood Letter, again, it's going to be another weapon where your build should be very tailored to the specific playstyle and type of PvP that you're doing, but here's one that can both do solo PvP and group PvP with some decent effectiveness. We have the Facebreaker for our shield, Stalker Jacket for our chest piece, Scholar Sandals for our boots, and then Helmet of Valor for our helmet with a Merfog cape. Next on the list we have the Hallowfall. The Hallowfall is a holy healing staff, which E ability allows it to jump up in the air, moving some distance and healing allies. This weapon is great for survivability on the healer because it has the best mobility of all healing staffs in the game. Healing staffs usually don't have much mobility, and so the Hallowfall has the most of all of them, which makes it very good for most PvP. Looking at the strengths of Hallowfall, starting off, it is very versatile in PvP, like we just mentioned. Basically, in any group PvP, Hallowfall is going to be viable, if not just straight up the best choice. 
Along with this, Halifal players are always in demand. People will bend over backwards for a good Halifal healer. Whether it's PvP or PvE, a good healer is always in demand, and especially a Halifal, which is one of the most valuable types of healers, is super high demand, so you can get things like tons of incentives on your regears for running Halifals, you'll always be able to find a group. Basically, if you want to feel desirable, play Halifal. Last but not least to his strengths is that Halifal's builds can be very static. You really don't have to switch out different parts of your build depending on what activity you're doing. You can basically just run the same build for everything. This allows you to really focus your spec in one area and get that high P really high. Moving on to the weaknesses, the first big glaring weakness of Halifal is that it is very expensive. It is probably one of the most expensive weapons in the entire game, being in high demand Avalonian artifact weapons. Along with this, the Halifal has quite a high skill floor. You're going to need to practice a fair amount before you can really pull off Halifal effectively. Most healers can just get away with sitting in the backline and pumping out heals on whatever's around them, but the Halifal, because of its mobility and safety, has the potential to play much more aggressively up in the front line, healing the tanks coming back when it needs to. And so to get the most effectiveness out of it, you really need to be knowing how to push your limits and play more aggressively in terms of your positioning than other healers would. Last but not least for weaknesses of the Halifal, it's really not great at fame farming if you don't have a group to fame farm with. If you have a group to fame farm with, which it shouldn't be too hard to find as a healer, it's fine, but if you are solo, holy stabs aren't the greatest at killing mobs, so you're going to take a little bit longer to level it up. Taking a look at an example build for the Halifal, a lot of this depends on your personal preference. Basically every slot can be switched out with different items depending on what you like. So I would suggest playing around a bit and finding out what style you like best, but here's one that I like and that works well. You have a mist color for your offhand, cleric rope for your chest, mercenary shoes for your boots, scholar cowl for your helmet, and limber's cape. Before we get into the last of these five weapons, I just wanted to quickly give an honorable mention to two weapons that just barely didn't make the cut. First up, we have a classic of the channel in the one-handed spear. One-handed spear is very classically a jack-of-all-trades, master of none for solo activities in particular. It's really not great in a group, but as a solo, you'll have a great time basically no matter what you're doing. Along with this, we also have the Bow of the Dawn. The Bow of the Dawn is really good at two things in particular. One is group fame farming. It's very good to have in a group fame farm as a DPS. And two, it is quite good at solo PvP. It's relatively good at some other things as well, but those are its two really big highlights. So if you like those two things, Bow of the Dawn is a great option. Okay, moving on to our last weapon, we have the One-Handed Nature Staff. The One-Handed Nature Staff has the E ability that allows it to do damage and root enemies, as well as heal all allies. Now, I wanted to include at least one weapon that was really good for PvE in this list, and this is that weapon. The One-Handed Nature Staff is amazing for PvE. Looking at the strengths of the One-Handed Nature Staff, first up, it is extremely versatile when it comes to PvE. Basically, any form of fame farming in the game, the One-Handed Nature Staff is either going to be good at, or at least viable for. Any sort of solo fame farming, or even in a group as a healer, it can do well. Along with this, when it comes to solo fame farming, the One-Handed Nature Staff is just uncontestedly the fastest weapon out there. There are some specific activities that something else might do slightly better at, but for basically everything, the One-Handed Nature is either like almost the best, like at the S tier, or just strictly the best with no comparison. It is just the single fastest weapon to fame farm with in the entire game. Along with this, the one-handed nature staff is quite easy. It's not particularly skillful. You can do some like raid level PvE solo with the one-handed nature staff and that gets fairly hard, but if you're just doing normal sort of Albion gameplay, it's a quite easy staff. It just has AoE abilities, simple spells. It's really not that challenging. And last but not least for our strengths, we have that it is cheap. Similar to the one-handed mace, it is a one-handed weapon, non-artifact, so it will be cheap and it will always be cheap. Taking a look at the weaknesses of the One-Handed Nature Staff, while it is the king of PvE, it is not the king of PvP. It's really not good for PvP, the only thing that it can be viable for is small-scale healing in a group around 5 people. Taking a look at an example build for the One-Handed Nature, again it is a weapon that you're going to want to tailor the build to the specific activity that you're trying to do, but a generic build that can sort of work for most things is a Cultist Robe, Mist Collar, Cleric Sandals, Soldier Helmet, and Thetford Cape. 
Okay, those are the top five weapons to main in Albion in 2023. I hope this video helped you find your new next main weapon, and I'll see you next time. Right